to start with. Yeah. Uh, just introduce yourself. Uh, and tell us who you are, what you do, and what this whole project is. Hi, I'm Sam Portland. I'm an elite athletic performance coach. I've been coaching at the top of the leagues for the last 10 years. This project, Building Greatness, has been the most impactful, empowering experience of my sporting career, helping Alexander the Great, Alex Gray, uh, realise his true athletic potential over the last couple of years. Alex Gray, one-time rugby player, now applying my trade in the NFL. I am a tight end, which is on the offence. I have to catch the ball and uh, block some pretty big guys as well. So me and Sam getting after it, trying to build a, build a beast. I mean, we've been in camp for 27 weeks now and neither of us have missed a day. So you know, we've been getting after it and that's kind of the standard we set. And you know, you put the work in, you get the results and that's kind of what's happening. Over the last couple of years, I've worked with him through his off season. And obviously during this time through the coronavirus, we've actually had an extended amount of time together and it has taken his performance from here all the way up to here. Know about this. Going to put together a nice little graph of your sprints yesterday. Oh yeah. Yeah. Three, two, one. Good. Only anyway, we can do it once. You break nine six times in ten minutes. That's a big thing that coaches miss. They don't understand that they, they're with some like conventional models. You always be trying to get a PB all the time. Yeah. But you need to get it to a certain level and then build depth off that level. So capacity trumps. Yeah. All right. Front. That's it. Great song. Ben Howard. <laughs> Our training week is, is a four day split. It's a standard uh, Monday, Tuesday, rest Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. We split that into two high days and two low days. High days are all about the stress of the central nervous system. So we save them for the most taxing things that we can do. For example, sprinting really, really fast. Monday for this block is our maximum speed day. It's the hardest day of the week, it's the fastest day of the week, and it's the day of the week that we need to recover the most for, which is why we put two days rest before. We've had to build Alex to be able to come in on day one and run fast over the last couple of months because traditionally we would use a day one to set up a day two. So now in this phase where we're close towards peaking, we come in fresh, firing, ready to go, and there's no coincidence that he's continuing to hit personal best after personal best because we've set the training up to allow this to happen. On our second day, we're, we're looking for our upper body uh, tempo, more recover recoverable abilities into our training. And then Wednesday's rest, and then we flip high day Thursday, low day Friday. As we talked about, we're looking at bodybuilding on Friday, change of direction on Thursday. So he's getting 72 hours at least between high days and then enough time to recover between low days. Two days off for his own headspace and just let his body to recover. Today, we're looking at our first low day of the week. This is day two after a really heavy fast day yesterday. The goal of today in the gym is uh, our upper body loading and then outside and through everything else is more tissue regeneration, some aerobic capacity, and then making sure we actually recover Alex so we can go towards our third day of training, which would be a uh, change of direction. What, how the day starts is a little bit more aggressive body work, um, more mobilizations uh, inside before we go outside and run some extensive tempo, which is all just about fluid relaxation, a bit of lymphatic drainage because we get his heart rate up, we get his blood moving, uh, and then we're back in for, for weights for upper body, where we get all of his heavy upper body lifting done. Uh, yeah, so we're doing um, upper body specific days. So using some of the exercises that we built around in the reformer based on Alex's needs, we um, are placing a more upper limb emphasis to pelvic control. So here we've got like front control, where we're bracing and holding a spinal position uh, through the hips and then moving the arms under load and duress. What you would traditionally find is people will do these in dead bug forms on their back, um, which is uh, doesn't, whilst a suitable alternative doesn't actually challenge the, uh, the bracing from a dynamic point of view enough. So where he's suspended and having to use a longer slings as opposed to shorter slings to stabilize. So we've got the short 
pectoralis, pectoralis, pectoralis uh, involved massively with the anterior and posterior oblique slings. So there you go. I'll betcha. Uh, and then reverse, reverse crunch. Hell yeah! This year we are operating out of Optima Performance Centre based in Acton, London, owned by Gary Anderson and uh, he's been really helpful in allowing us to have exclusive use of the facility and, and we can come in and get on and, and do what we want. This facility is actually an Olympic accredited facility. We've got all the barbell and the weights that we need, we've got plyometrics, we have some diagnostic equipment, we also have Pilates Reformer which is a big staple in, in our program with addressing movements and weak links uh, and then we also have with my own equipment we have state-of-the-art GPS we have jump mat technology speed timing technology so we've got a really comprehensive system of which allows us to individualize and continue to improve performance all right Sunny's in the car water tunes swag let's go Um, so today's a low day and what we do in our low day is, well it's our first low day so we're looking at some extensive tempo running today uh, just after our prep work um, which is going to do a couple of things for us. Yesterday was a max speed day which was a big max speed day. Uh, ran some really good times and stuff yesterday so today is just all about some rhythm relaxation in terms of our running uh, but then also we get a nice little bit of aerobic work done um, but we're also using it for restorative purposes so we're we're not really setting too much in terms of big efforts on speed today it's literally just relaxed rhythmic running feeling the ground facilitating recovery more than that comes back for day three after his day off he's ready to go and, and run hard again so recovery aerobic development um, and just more some technical refinement in and out 20 minutes um, we'll be good to go then we're in the gym I think the best thing about what we've got here as well is the expectations are all clear, they're set. And the process is working. The process is working. We keep doing what's working until it doesn't. Then we start again. Easy. Easy. Yeah. All right, in we go. All right, we go. Don't need to put anything in the car. Oh, yeah, I was just looking at keys. Mate, pop the boot open. Right there. Right there. They literally just fell out. But we tested it. You can't lock the keys in the car. Just the boot. But you can lock it in the boot. And then there's no external way to open the boot because there's no button. It's all done on the key. On the inside. It's a malfunction. That's good. Just a malfunction. The way that I work as a coach, we look at a complete holistic performance strategy. So I'll take him through his body work, his tissue work, all the way up to his speed and power. What we've had to do is, is highlight through, and the beauty of the relationship is that we, because it's one-to-one, -one, we've been able to be incredibly specific for everything that we're doing. From the way each and every joint works to the type of loading we need to do, we can completely 100% tailor the training around him. We started again like we did in the first year. We stripped everything right back because for every time an athlete comes out of a 
continued period of performance, we have to put a strategy of rebuilding in. We need to understand how his body's changed because he was away from me for a long period of time. Uh, bringing him back in, we had to get a real big picture. So we used some specific numbers, nothing too uh, taxing um, in terms of testing wise. And then we start building and, and continually accumulating training around that. So, you know, the big numbers that we're always interested in is, is fast times fast times and if it doesn't allow us to build fast times then we don't want to use it. So first of all, a high uh, speed, reactive speed, strength, quality work um, with the reactive med ball. Uh, completely overcoming, so no preload eccentrically. As you see, we were dropping, absorbing and throwing. Doing the same with the um, slam, absorbing and throwing. Very, very fast. So that's one part of the force velocity continuum that we're hitting with our ballistic work. Med balls, low risk high reward and then now we're moving into more of our strength speed overcoming work before we hit our strength. A quick return at the bottom. Nice. So when, so when we're looking at this, typically a push press people will focus from the dip and climb at the bottom where we're looking Walk the force down and then drive back out. It's more specific to what we're trying to do outside and our bigger global picture is that we're trying to relate everything back to sport. So starting from here and driving up is nowhere near the same as the systemic recoil that puts us through here. So that's how we do our push press. And then on the pool today we're starting from because we're not working on overcoming strength. We'll be working on um, reactive and absorbing speed. So we're at the top. So we're at the top. Drop, drive. So loads of tension. So we're speeding his arms up on the way down. That's it. That's it. Very heavy. So what are you um, thinking? How's it feeling? No, I'll be spotting. Because it's not um, overload, is it? So last week you did three at five seconds off the chest. So you did three at 110 last week. And you got two twos today. So what would you like? Well, we'll start at 115 then, all right? Ready? Three, two, one. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there we go. One, two, three, four, five. Come on. Good. Nice. There you go. Three, two, one. Yep. One, two, three, four. Finish it. Nice. What this does illustrate is that you're very elastic. You can do nine reps at 10 something, having to hold and then be static, which is fine. Do the ISOs do? The ISOs, basically, in terms of our sequencing of exercise, it's like our middle point. So our isometrics in in that phase of holding it's looking to create a lot of muscle activation and trying to get him to create much much more tension than we need so it would basically work on if you can create tension for an extended period of time and then try and create that tension really really quickly into the next box of, of training so all firing on the tendons that's what we're looking to 
expose the tendons. Two, um, three second hold, and then one power range. Two reps. Wet. Drive, 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 push. Well done. Drive. Two, one, drive. Come on. Good. Nice. That's it. That's what we want. <laughs> Like this content what I need you to do first and foremost drop a comment second subscribe third click the notification bell and I'll be there for you brilliant that's it that's what we need did I point in the right direction yeah, yeah. yeah perfect